Hi everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Lessons Learned from Innovative Water Heating Programs. Uh, today we'll be hearing from uh, two program managers and um, a manufacturer. Um, my name is Kim Katz from CEE, and I'll be your moderator today. And before we begin, I have a few housekeeping announcements, which you may have already heard if you were part of the plenary panel earlier today. Um, and so your screen is customizable, so feel free to play around with the various windows and make them as large or as small as you would like. You can also minimize them um, to drop to the bottom menu on your screen. Um, all of the presentations can be downloaded as PDFs from the resource list in the menu. Um, attendees are in listen-only mode, but you can submit questions through the Q&A box at any time during the webcast. Um, after each presentation, we'll have a couple of minutes for um, clarifying questions specific to their presentations. And then at the end of all three presentations, we'll um, move on to additional questions. Um, all of the presentations will be available for on-demand viewing within a few days on the Engagement Hub where you registered for the sessions. And finally, at the end of the session, we will be opening chat rooms on the Zoom platform for anyone who wishes to continue the conversation with us about the session topics or if you'd like to ask further questions of the presenters. Um, to access the Zoom chat, there's a chat room icon in your menu bar with the link. And again, that'll be opening after the session concludes. On behalf of ACEEE, we wish to recognize and thank our sponsors for this event. Um, so our platinum sponsors, Reem and AO Smith, and our silver sponsors, Redford White, Green Power EMC, Jackson EMC, NIA, and SoCal Gas. And now um, I'd like to, um, before I introduce our speakers, I'll just give a brief background. I know um, you heard a little bit about CEE's work from Alice Rosenberg during the plenary, but I'd like to um, just give a little bit of background to our three excellent presenters that you'll hear from today. Um, so CEE has a residential water heating initiative that includes tiered efficiency specifications for both gas and electric equipment, as well as optional connected criteria, um, education awareness and training components, um, and encourages stakeholder engagement across the supply chain. Um, and these are things that CEE members, um, utilities and program administrators have identified as key aspects of efficiency programs. And the consensus that these um, members have come to is that there's this growing feeling that there's more to do for water heating programs beyond issuing rebates. And so programs are exploring different strategies. And these include um, midstream approaches, promoting stocking practices of efficient equipment, contractor training, education and awareness of contractors and customers, um, and other new strategies. And the reason for this is that they're finding success in these new approaches. So if we consider um, heat pump water heater program, residential programs specifically, if we look at, as a proxy, the number of heat pump water heaters rebated per number of electric only utility customers, you can see that for most programs, this is a pretty low number. Um, and then there are a few outliers whose programs have been increasing over the last few years. And these are primarily programs that have implemented midstream approaches. And you can see the same looking at CE member programs um, and how they're issuing rebates. Um, so only 12% of CEE member water heating programs offer instant rebates, but two thirds of heat pump water heaters are rebated through that channel. And so that really shows that these new strategies are um, increasing uptake of efficient equipment. So with that background in mind and thinking about how these programs have um, been evolving over the last few years, I'd like to introduce um, our three panelists um, so first, we'll hear from Jesus Pernia, a program manager at Eversource. Um, then we'll hear from Jen Sylvester from National Grid. And finally, Francois Labrasseur from AO Smith. Um, Jesus, I'll hand it off to you. Jesus, I think that you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Hello. Perfect. Perfect. 
Um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, uh, we have some technical difficulties, so I'm going to ask uh, Kim to please advance uh, my slides. And first of all, uh, I want to say thank you to Kim, uh, Alice, Aileen, and the ACEEE organization, the CEE, for uh, inviting me uh, today to speak at this forum. This is a very important forum, and uh, to you know to present the uh, water heating programs that we run at uh, Eversource. Um, next slide, please, Kim. Kim. So, let me just briefly talked about Eversource. Eversource is uh, the largest uh, en um, energy uh, delivery company in New England. Uh, ener uh, Eversource uh, uh, provides services across uh, three states, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Um, roughly about 3.6 million customers across uh, the whole territory, employs over 8,000 uh, individuals, and invests um, over uh, 5 million, 50, 500 million uh, 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 annually on, on, on energy efficiency. I am um, running programs in New Hampshire and in Connecticut, so I'm going to talk about both uh, programs during my presentation. New Hampshire have roughly about 447,000 electric customers, only electric service up there. And Connecticut have both gas and electric. So electrics is roughly 1.2 million customers, gas is 222,000. So um, I'm going to provide details about uh, the, the programs and different channels and the, and the partnership that we have in each state. Uh, next slide, Kim, please. So uh, the water heating program and uh, residential, uh, basically the objective of this program is to create awareness, um, um, education, and also uh, promote the sale of high efficiency water heaters. In Connecticut, um, we offer rebate for gas and electric, and in New Hampshire, it's only, it's only electric. And in Connecticut, uh, we work with distributors and, and retailers. Basically, we have about 65 agreements uh, with different uh, partners across uh, across the state. That is roughly 133 locations statewide. And the um, rebate is a, is, is a form of an instant discount. So basically, we ask uh, this distributor to pass through the whole 100% 100, 100 of the incentive to their customer. And, um, and they also have to collect um, and use the data from, uh, uh, from their, their contractors. So in order to do so, we also provide them uh, a $30 incentive or processing fee to collect the data and share the data with the, with the um, uh, utility companies. Um, in the retail channel, we have two major partners and totally about 48 locations. And last year, we launched an uh, uh, instant discount e-rebate, which is a very real-time way to validate customers and also offer an uh, instant discount uh, to those customers to make the purchase uh, uh, there uh, uh, at the store, or they can also do, do, do it online. As for um, incentive levels, uh, we offer $300 for tankless and contesting uh, water heaters and you know, eligible uh, energy star rated uh, uh, 0.92 FUE on the tankless and 95% uh, thermal efficiency on the on the condensing units. For heat pump water heaters, uh, we're offering $750 for um, uh, units that are equal or less than 55 gallons and $400 for units that are larger than 55 gallons or the, the capacity. New Hampshire, uh, historically, they have run melon rebates. Just recently, last year, they shift into more hybrid melon rebate and also instant discount model. And uh, they have um, two retailers participating in the program, 33 locations. And, um, and the rebates that they're offering uh, in New Hampshire is $500 for the 55 gallons and less storage capacity heat and water heaters and $600 for um, those that are larger than 55 gallons. Next slide, Kim, please. As for uh, marketing and reach and education, um, we have a uh, point of purchase material and we utilize a, a third party vendor to place a uh, point of purchase material through all the different locations. 
uh, participating locations across the, uh, 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 the states. Um, in addition, uh, the, the field team is in charge of uh, training sales associates, you know, provide information, verify, uh, signage, uh, rebates, uh, making sure that the, 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 the process work at the end, and also answer any questions. Uh, we have run digital media, uh, Google Ads uh, you know, campaigns. Uh, last year, um, we run a very successful uh, uh, digital media, and I have some uh, data to, to share with the, with the, uh, with, with the audience. Uh, also, direct mailer, basically, um, we have partnered with manufacturers to do and 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 and, re, and or retail partners to uh, run a direct mailer um, is has been very successful too. I have some in my next slides. I'm going to show you some some of, of that data. Uh, but, um, is is very positive. Uh, educational brochures. Um, also, we um, utilize a, a postcard, and that is uh, a postcard that for every customer that. Um, receive a rebate and we get the data or rebate fulfillment vendor mail out that postcard to, you know, thank the customer that, you know, for participating in the program and getting, uh, uh, their, you know, in, uh, getting a high efficient equipment installed in it. But also it has more information uh, about all the other programs. So if they're interested on, on a weatherization assess, uh, assessment for the homes, I mean, they can go to our website and, and, and find that information there. Um, and lastly, contractors are training for workshops. We run uh, a good amount of those uh, uh, around the year. Uh, I really thank the manufacturer and distributors and uh, basically our partners there with us to, to collaborate with us to um, run these uh, this events because it, it's, that is important, that's key. Basically, we have to inform uh, inform contractors about the options, about the different incentives that are available, so they can communicate that to the customers. And on top of that, uh, you know, inform them about you know what are the best practices and and, and all of that. Um, Kim, next slide, please. And um, as I mentioned um, earlier, um, last year the Connecticut and Hampshire programs launched an um, instant discount uh, e rebate. Platform. So basically, there's a, 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 a coupon or a barcode that the customer get when that they they apply online in real time. Uh, in Connecticut, the platform was launched in, in April, May, basically second quarter of the year. Uh, New Hampshire, in during the last quarter of the year, and this is a very simple way to offer the instant discount to customers, so they can use it uh, when they're buying the, the high efficiency equipment uh, at the store. It's, it, and it, it is quite simple. Basically, customer, they have to just look, you know, uh, go to the uh, the URL or, or click on the QR code that is on the, on, on the signage and uh, just follow the instruction. Basically, the platform or the site is going to ask him for a uh, name, address, and a mobile phone. So, um, or, um, Rebate fulfillment vendor validate that information. If the customer is eligible, uh, they will ask him to select which of the stores are they planning to uh, make the purchase or get the the, the barcode, and then um, and then uh, they, they will receive a link with the actually barcode and make that transaction there. Um, Kim, next um, slide, please. And this is just a you know example, a uh, couple of pictures where we shows uh, the uh, signage or, or point of purchase material how they are placed in the stores. We have the medical sign, we have the sticker that goes on the backs of the equipment, also the horizontal sign, and it has you know information uh, about the process how to redeem the the, the instant discount. Uh, and something that uh, I mean caught my attention, I, I took the, the picture of the. Uh, new into the store is that uh, if you offer an instant discount, if you're able to you know mark down the price uh, of the high efficiency equipment low enough that is comparable to uh, standard equipment, and customers you know are knowledgeable about about the about the benefit of that equipment, they're gonna buy. And this is the example that I have. Basically, the uh, electric resistant water heater that you have there is 499. The heat pump water heater is 1199, but mine is the 750 
that was instant discount, same price, four ninety nine. So uh it seems it looks like uh, one of the uh models uh was purchased. So it's is is I mean price is also important. It's uh, the that instant discount motivate customers to 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 make the next step. And we just need to facilitate that process. Um Kim, next slide please. And these are some of the results of the marketing campaigns. Um, as I mentioned um, earlier, uh, last year we run a, a digital ad. Um, we received uh, about 16,000 uh, views. And um, the bottom graph is uh, the mailer rebate. Basically, sorry, the, the mailer uh, promotion that it was sent to 150,000 customers, this is in Connecticut. And as you can see, we launched the instant discount uh, platform in April. And April through July, basically we just had some you know, social media and we have the signage in the store. But in August, uh, we released the, the mailer uh, to all, all, all those customers. And as you can see, the jump in participation, basically. Uh, these are customers that uh, went to the store, went online, and downloaded the, the barcode. Um, Kim, next slide, please. So these are the results for Connecticut. This is for heat and water heater for natural gas. The dark um, color um, area on the, on, the, uh, on the graph is basically natural gas water heaters, the lighter uh, bluish. At the bottom is our heat and water heaters. And as you can see, uh, in 2013, when we moved from uh, the, his, you know, the, the historical mail rebate into the more, uh, into a, a mainstream instant discount model, I mean, we, we experienced a jump of over 353%. Um, you know, if in year after year, I mean, due to the to this change, it helped us to meet meet or or exceed our goals. Actually, exceed our goals. 2020 uh, is the last uh, bar on your right. Is year to date data through June. Uh, Heap and water heaters numbers are doing well. Gas water heaters too. I mean, I'm expecting that we're going to exceed uh, numbers from 2019. Um, this year as well. Uh, next uh, slide, Kim, please. And then this is New Hampshire numbers. Uh, New Ham I'm, I'm, this is uh, data from 2018 to through 2020, um, June here today. 2018, just you know, historically mail and rebates. In 2019. Um, uh, the program shift during the last quarter of the year to an uh, instant discount uh, model, and you see you see the numbers. It, it's not it, it's a con considerable jump. In uh, 2020 year to day through June, basically we are uh, uh, higher than the numbers that we had in 2018. So I'm expecting this year we will, we, we will double uh, those uh, those uh, those results. And lastly, um, this is uh, I want to really uh, you know uh, you know thank the partners, uh, basically uh, you know working with uh, manufacturers, distributors, and uh, and and retailers ha has really helped the, the, the program basically to educate uh, contractors, educate cons con consumers, and also see the results. Um, I mean. Uh, L. Smith and Reem has helped us to run multiple uh, trainings uh, to or uh, contractor networks or their contractor networks. Also, this has helped us to uh, train sales associates through Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, in addition, I mean, they con constantly ran uh, um, uh, distributors uh, uh, education meetings or, or workshops. Um, so I'm, I'm, I really appreciate all the collaboration and support that we receive from our uh, industry partners. In addition, uh, the retail stores have helped us to launch a new initiative, uh, like a new technologies, the instant uh, rebate uh, barcode we just launched last year and we've seen really positive results. And lastly, um, you know, working with, the, with our partners to educate the customers Customers, that mailer, uh, we have run it for uh, three, uh, two consecutive years. We're seeing really good results year after year, and uh, uh, I'm very, very thankful, thankful of how this has played to, for the success of the program. Um,
I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jesus. Um, I just before we move on, I want to ask you one question that came through in the chat, um, and someone asked um, if you offer the instant rebate for products other than the heat pump water heaters, um, if they're so successful. Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, basically, in the Connecticut program, we offer um, the mystery rebate uh, for boilers, furnaces, uh, ductless heat pumps, boiler circulator pumps, and the numbers jumps. I mean, 200, 300 percent moving from the mailing rebate to the to the mainstream. Basically, you have to be. I mean, you have to be. Uh, understand that if you move midstream, you're gonna op open up the market. You're gonna encourage distributors and retailers to stack up more, more of those products because uh, numbers are going to raise. And also, you know, you have to you have to be uh, cautious about your budget because numbers are going to jump. Uh, what I'm seeing is uh, over 200% basically for all the measures that, 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 that we have uh, uh, moved to the midstream uh, model or instant model. Great. Thanks so much, and thanks for the presentation. Um, next up, we'll be hearing from Jen Sylvester. And Jen, I'll pass the presentation to you. Thank you for joining this session, everybody. My name is Jen Sylvester. I'm coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts. I hope everyone is doing well. I work at National Grid, and I am going to be sharing some lessons learned from our commercial and industrial midstream gas water heating program that we've had in existence since about 2016. Just a little overview about National Grid. It's an investor-owned utility with natural gas and electricity services in New York, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. Uh, on the screen, you can see a map of our service distribution territory. And we implement energy efficiency programs for residential and commercial customers throughout all three of those states funded by charges on utility energy bills. I'm going to be talking to you about Massachusetts and Rhode Island in particular today. So on the screen in front of you, you should see the state of Massachusetts as well as Rhode Island and all of the corresponding towns that have natural gas service available to our customers. In Massachusetts, it is a state that has multiple natural gas utilities in the state, and we all partner together to implement the exact same midstream gas water heating program for our commercial customers. And uh, you can see on the screen the other gas utilities that participate along with National Grid. Just a note for a little bit farther into my presentation, there is a number of towns on the uh, screen in front of you that don't have natural gas service and they are therefore with the gray uh, coloration. So just that's something to note because that is a lesson learned in uh, our experience with the program so far. So in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, it is a midstream program similar to the format that uh, Jesus went over previously in Connecticut and New Hampshire. Uh, the purpose uh, why we moved to this in 2016 was to influence high efficiency sales at the distributor level so that distributors have equipment stocked and ready to go in the case a water heater needs to be sold to a business. We wanted to reach and educate more of our customers as well about the benefits of high efficiency water heating products and why to, to install them. And we also had really low mail and rebate participation, similar type graphic to what Jesus showed was the case on his uh, residential programs. The program format, we do have a third party implementation vendor that we all the utilities have signed and have an agreement with who then negotiates participation at the distributor level. Uh, we have a number of participating distributors all throughout Massachusetts and Rhode Island who are signed up. It is an instant discount that has to be applied at the point of sale to reduce the upfront cost of the water heater. Uh, customer information for where that's going to be installed is required at the time of sale. 
we do pay an additional incentive uh, per MBTUH to the distributor as you know a fee for for helping us collect that information, stocking the equipment, and and selling it. Uh, so our current incentives are on the screen for you to see, and there's also uh, two web links. One is the Massachusetts website and the other one is the national grid specific website for you to check out if you'd like to see how we showcase the programs to the public so now i'm going to get into the the meaty details about all of the lessons that we've learned along the way in in implementing a commercial midstream water heating program the first lesson is on the evaluation type front. So if you are a utility company or a third party implementation vendor and your programs are evaluated by a regulatory agency or any sort of other uh, stakeholder for effectiveness, you wanna make sure before you launch a midstream program that everybody internally is on the same page and there's consensus with the program design in itself. A uh, little background on Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Initially, we had a midstream program that was completely uh, the incentive was completely flexible that was paid to the distributor and in uh, 2018, we ended up changing it so that there was a, a partial incentive that was required to be uh, passed along at the point of sale. So that caused a lot of confusion and, and uh, issues trying to change formats after it was launched. So I recommend uh, not doing that and, and just launching it in the program that everybody agrees with to begin with. If uh, I really recommend collecting market share data before you launch a program, that's a really great way to see how you are making an impact on the industry and in your area. If you can get manufacturer sales data or distributor sales data and see how it changes through time with your program, that is really valuable and really important. If you're not going to be disclosing a customer incentive at the point of sale from a distributor transaction uh, point of view, you're going to want to make sure your evaluation, if you have to hire any sort of evaluation team, that they don't go asking customers if the incentive helped them uh, sway their purchasing decision. If the customer had no idea they even got an incentive because that's not how the program was designed, you don't want to ask that question. That won't go very well uh, in your evaluation results. You also want to make sure you're incentivizing appropriate measures. Uh, something that's really complex and customized is not appropriate for a midstream program format. The next lesson that I've learned along the way is uh, simple program design is key to having a successful midstream program. You are relying on distributors to participate and they have so much on their plate. You need to be really conscious of what you require of them and make sure that you can try and be as simple as possible while still collecting the information that you need to be successful. So if you have, uh, if you recall back to the graphic earlier, there's a number of towns that don't have natural gas service in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And there's also a, a handful of towns that are municipal, uh, municipal gas towns. So if they're not paying into the energy efficiency program. You have to decide if you're going to fund those projects or not. And if you aren't going to, you need to make it clear to distributors uh, what towns qualify and what towns don't uh, with some sort of zip code list and maps and anything you could do to just make them aware of them, uh, the products that uh, or towns that don't qualify. Also with a propane, propane overlap, uh, since it is quite easily interchangeable with a number of natural gas water heater equipment, uh, you wanna make sure that is addressed too. If you are in a territory where there are multiple utilities around, try and get them all to participate. The larger the service territory, the easier for distributors and the, the more simple it is for them to not have to worry about what towns qualify and what towns don't. If you do have a, a mail-in rebate or some sort of downstream online submission uh, type format, I recommend getting rid of it uh, if you can, if you're going to be moving to a midstream format. Uh, that is a, provides a lot less confusion for distributors and customers, because if you're going to be denying a mail-in rebate, if it already got a midstream incentive, you want to just 
try and uh, make it as easy as possible for customers so that they aren't upset at you if they get denied a mail-in rebate and uh, about because of the midstream incentive being applied already. And if, if a custom or downstream program does exist, I recommend having a really clear cut point. You know, if you're going to have a midstream program to say, you know, everything's allowed midstream if it's five or less units or, you know, tankless units or something like that. And then anything over that could be allowed custom or downstream. You just, you want to avoid as much overlap as possible and make it as clear cut as you can with what your program offerings are. The third lesson that I've learned is the commercial and residential overlap. A lot of distributors consider multifamily buildings to be commercial. When from a utility perspective, if they have individual meters, you might be metering them residentially and consider them a residential structure and you might have a separate multifamily incentive program. So you really want to make sure that you make it clear to distributors what your commercial and residential parameters are and try to prevent double dipping between programs. So if uh, you have a multifamily tankless program, you know, do you want a midstream incentive applied to it or do you want to try and force and funnel all the projects through your separate multifamily program? So that's something to consider. You don't you don't want to have uh, double dipping and double claiming of savings and double paying of incentive. Uh, so you just need to make it really clear to the distributors where that distinction lies between commercial and residential. And then another interesting lesson that we've learned along the way is sometimes certain pieces of equipment can be easily interchanged. You know, a tankless water heater can go into a small business and it can also go into somebody's home. So distributors are selling it and they need to make sure that they understand the incentives associated with it. So uh, we ran into a case with circulator pumps where the residential program had a midstream offering for circulator pumps and so did the commercial team but the incentive on the residential side was a hundred dollars and the incentive on the commercial side was fifty dollars for the same exact pump you know really small horsepower circulator pump uh, and that caused a lot of distributor confusion because they have to program their you know, their back end systems and having two separate incentives was throwing them off and causing most of the commercial sales to not even be processed because it was just, we made it, <laughs> we were making it more confusing for the distributor than we should have. So eventually we changed the incentive so that the residential equipment and the CNI equipment for the exact same pump was the same incentive, regardless of what structure it was being installed in. And then my last lesson learned that I want to share is just some general observations. You know, distributors, when, if you're starting a program or you're trying to make your existing program uh, through a midstream channel more effective, they really need a quality point of contact who they can reach out to with any questions and can can help them along the way. So especially if you're requiring certain things of them like customer installation address and name, you want to make sure you are there to, to help them and somebody will respond because they you know they have a really a lot on their plate. They act fast and you need to make sure you can be there to support them. I wanted to echo all of Jesus's really great graphics that he showed about point of sale type marketing material. Even with a midstream program, you want to do some marketing material, whether it's point of purchase material like Jesus had in distributor branches. Uh, we also did a, a direct mail type campaign in Massachusetts and Rhode Island to help educate uh, the business customer and use customers that, hey, we have incentives available for natural gas water heating equipment. Uh, you can you can do uh, Facebook posts. We've done Facebook posts. We've done some LinkedIn type uh, 
outreach to try and educate business owners and educate contractors. I'm not a social media expert, but uh, we do have folks that understand how to, to find all of the proper paths to reach out to contractors and business owners. Uh, and then lastly, my lesson learned is in, you know, engage, engage with contractors, even though your contractual relationship is with the distributor. Distributors often have great networks of contractors because they're their customers that you want to work together to reach to. So commercial businesses do understand return on investment and they, you know, they they want to purchase equipment that's going to be beneficial to them in the long run. But contractors really are the, the hinge point at the distributor that are asking for the product and they're going to be the ones who are going to make the distributor stock it and have it available. So uh, nurture that relationship with distributors and, and ultimately with contractors to help your program be successful. So uh, that's all for me. Thank you so much for having me present today. Thanks so much, Jen. Um, before we move on, um, a quick question that we received was about whether you require proof of permitting to install a safe installation, especially for gas water heaters. That's a really great question. We do not require proof of permitting uh, at, in our program. Great, thank you. Um, thanks for a great presentation. Um, and I would now like to invite Francois to um, talk a little bit about A.O. Smith's promotion of um, efficient water heaters. Thank you, Kim. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I'm Francois Labarso, I work for Aerosmith, and I'm going to provide a, a manufacturer perspective on uh, midstream programs, uh, on uh, energy star water heaters in general. And uh, we'll go back to residential um, for this particular presentation. Um, one thing that's very, very important is that um, a water heater, or the water heater industry is uh, very different from the HVAC industry. Uh, from the channel perspective, um, it's a market uh, which is split uh, between uh, retail and wholesale, plumbing wholesalers and retailers. Retailers, primarily home improvement companies, Home Depot and Lowe's. And um, from a wholesale perspective, many uh, regional and national distributors who sell to contractors. Um, so even this split, if you look at uh, you know, the, um, the, the red bar, that's retail. And I um, wanted to show you uh, the, the red bar, um, the split between retail and wholesale by generation. Um, what's re remarkable is that uh, if you look at millennials and uh, Gen Xers, uh, it's almost uh, six or seven out of 10 uh, who actually shop at retail. So there is a um, big tendency um, to um, gravitate towards retail these days. So my big recommendation is that as you implement uh, midstream programs, make sure that uh, you make um, the instant rebates available in all channels, including retail and wholesale. Now on the retail front, um, AO Smith, we sell our products to Lowe's. And um, I'm happy to share some uh, interesting insights on uh, the heat pump water heater sales at, at, at Lowe's. If you look at Lowe's, there's about 1,700 uh, Lowe's stores in the nation. Half of them stock uh, locally, heat pump water heaters. Um, but if you look at the sales at Lowe's, um, it's only actually 90 stores which generate um, uh, most of the sales. 43% um, of the heat pump water heaters uh, sales at Lowe's are coming from 90 stores, which is 12% of, the, of the, the stocking stores. And um, then if you look at the makeup of, the, of those uh, 90 stores, you will quickly realize that um, they almost all of them, they fall um, into an instant rebate program or a mailing rebate program. Um, but those rebate programs, for the most part, they are all at an um, incentive of $500 or more. So the big takeaway here is that um, incentives matter and high dollar incentives really matter. Now, what I've done here is that I've looked at um, the low sales by store. 
It's a common denominator that helps us compare performance by program or performance by, by state. Um, that's the units sold um, per store. And um, remarkable to see uh, Hawaii with a $500 mid, um, midstream, it's a markdown, um, is leading the pack, followed by Maine, $750 mainland rebate. Um, to, to be mentioned that uh, also Maine uh, advertises a lot and offers an instant rebate at wholesale. Um, Oregon has been uh, doing a midstream $500 for a long time, very successful uh, instant rebate uh, markdown. Um, Connecticut, uh, you heard Jesus, um, $750 uh, for the 50 gallon uh, value instant, doing very well. Um, Vermont uh, also uh, has a mailing rebate, but also offers an instant rebate at wholesale. Um, and finally, I wanted to highlight uh, in Pennsylvania, you've got uh, First Energy who's running a $500 markdown. That's the star here. Um, it shows that um, uh, they are running far ahead of uh, the rest of the pack in Pennsylvania. They're really pulling Pennsylvania with the performance. So, uh, so um, the takeaway here is that um, if you really, really want to drive um, performance, sales performance of uh, energy star heat pump water heaters, um, if you can offer an instant rebate uh, at $500 or more, uh, that's the way to go. Now, um, it's not, uh, you know, instant rebates don't only work for heat pump water heaters. I know we've been, um, we've been uh, very blessed to work with more and more utilities who've been uh, working with us to, uh, to switch mailing rebates to, uh, to markdowns or valid instant programs uh, with heat pump water heaters. But, um, I wanted to show you that um, if you are a, a gas utility, that, that can work miracles for you too. I want to show here the, the case of California. I'm comparing on the top a, an Energy Star gas tank um, water heater to um, the most commonly sold um, standard uh, uh, gas water heater uh, at Lowe's, um, a six-year, 50-gallon. And um, it's remarkable to see that... Um, now, in the case of uh, SoCal, which is uh, Los Angeles and, uh, and San Diego, so SoCal Gas and SDG&E, uh, look at the performance, the, comp the comparative performance of the Energy Star product um, compared to the standard baseline product. Well, uh, Lowe's is able to really pull many, many more of the Energy Star uh, option uh, than in the rest of California where you don't have that kind of instant rebate. So I, I was looking to, um, to show you something very easy to comprehend. Uh, it, it's quite remarkable that even a, five, a $100 instant rebate is able to really sway a consumer to energy stock. Um, so um, thank you. So yes, midstream is very important. Uh, advertising, you've heard it from the other speakers, is super important. We got to make sure that um, the consumers know about the technology before they go to the store. And uh, this is an example of we've been uh, fortunate to run it, to run for two years with NIA and Energy Trust of Oregon um, a campaign uh, in 2018 and 19, a mailer campaign, and. Um, in both cases, we've been able to really uh, show a really great um, surge in, in sales at the end in the fall when we've been running those mailers. Um, and um, it was particularly a hockey stick um, in 2018 when we ran the $700 instant rebate. In, in, in 19, we did 500. We wanted to test different price points, and I'm glad we did. It really shows that. Uh, you know, a $700 uh, instant rebate combined with a great advertising campaign, um, that's, um, that's a winner. Um, so this is an option that you have in your toolkit is to work with us uh, and try different price points and try to get to the optimal of uh, what, we, what you can afford and what the market will uh, react to. 
So like Jesus was saying, there are two ways to implement instant rebates. You've got the straight markdown, like you've been used to with lighting, fuel reduction in price. Um, so the, the, the big benefit here is that the, the price tag, it's reduced automatically. Um, and uh, the con is that you will not be able to get um, uh, end user data um, because a retailer like Lowe's will not share uh, personal information. And then validate instant, uh, that's a pre-qualification of the customer in store or online um, that will get you the end user data. Um, the, um, the cons is that it's more expensive um, and we still have to look at um, you know, the performance. I have, I have a feeling, but just a feeling at this point, that markdown are probably more effective from a pure sales perspective, but it's, I'm not, I don't have enough data points yet. On the wholesale side, we've been working a lot to uh, develop a lot of tools to train the contractors, not only to install energy star wallet heaters, but also to sell energy star wallet heaters and to advertise them. So uh, I invite you to, um, to access those, um, um, those tools, those central repository, uh, discover all the great uh, material that we've, um, that we've created. And um, if you're interested, uh, work with us, uh, pool funds with us, and uh, let's work together to create leads for our contractors. That's what they like. And um, that, that will make them um, more confident to offer the product when they know that consumers already are, are asking for it. And you've got a unique, very unique opportunity. We've got a unique opportunity this year because we do have a, a $300 fellow tax credit. Um, it will expire at the end of the year. Uh, will there be one next year? Maybe. Um, but well, we know that we have it now. So. Um, it's uh, valid for um, uh, gas water heaters with a UEF energy factor uh, higher than 0 0.81. It's valid for uh, heat pump water heaters. So what a great opportunity for us together to co-fund uh, advertising campaigns uh, to drive uh, consumers to know more about Energy Star water heaters and uh, go buy them um, where um, they can find them um, from um, consultants that can really sell them and install them properly. So um, work with us, that's my recommendation, and um, I think we'll, uh, we'll do very, very well in the fall. That's what I had. Thanks so much, Francois. Um, so now we'll move on to some Q&A with all of our panelists. So please do feel free to um, sending your questions to us. Um, and while you're doing that, I'll start off with something I've been wondering, which is um, there's obviously been a lot of changes to how efficiency programs have been running over the past few months during the pandemic. And so I'm curious to hear um, how your programs have evolved or been affected over the past few months. And Francois, I'll let you kick it off. How, how pro programs have evolved? That's your question? Yes, or, or what you've seen, how you've seen um, purchasing behavior change, um, what changes you've experienced. From consumers, um, yeah, obviously, um, with the COVID situation, um, we see a lot of, um, um, maybe not necessarily purchases online, but a lot of uh, consumers uh, doing pre-purchases online. Um, and um, I, I uh, kind of a trend towards retail, uh, which I was uh, mentioning earlier. Um, so I think that um, it's very important for us together to help our um, um, trade allies um, get better at presenting energy star products um, on, the, um, on their website. And um, in, in addition to actually training the staff. Thanks. Jesus or Jen, would you like to um, speak to your program? Thank you. Sure, I can I can connect. Actually, uh, something that we're seeing the last uh, you know few months, and this is due to the pandemic, is that uh, most of the um, research or purchases are moving online, not just for what it heated. Basically, overall, customers are uh, uh, you know uh, going online to to uh, uh, research on the products, uh, you know, and see what are the opportunities. Um, 
uh, in, in, in this county if they're available. So uh, we encourage, I mean, basically programs to uh, you know, to spend, to do more marketing online, but also work with the partners. And uh, just uh, for, for example, um, we work with um, Eco Rebate. It's a, it's a third party vendor that basically they promote uh, uh, rebates through different uh, retail channels, even this, even uh, uh, some distributors and manufacturers. So they help us to uh, display or rebate and rebate information through different uh, 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 retail channels, websites. Uh, so now customers can go to uh, you know Home Depot, Lowe's, and uh, if they if they if they look if they're looking for a hip and water heater, if they see next to the price uh, rebates available, if they click on that link, they're gonna find or, or the rebate information uh, that are, are available for the program, and um, they can actually also apply and get the instant discount there. They can buy, send it to the to their home, or can buy, send it to. Uh, the, uh, the store uh, for pickup, or at least download the rebate and just go to to to, to the store environment there. So uh, online, online is it seems like a, um, a customers are, are moving into the uh, platform. So uh, more uh, uh, you know, be 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 cautious about that basically. I would agree. On, from a commercial business owner perspective, we've done some research and found that a lot of the business owners in our territory are younger than we had thought and therefore really interested in what our website has for content. So we've been really conscious at making sure our website is as easy to navigate as we can to uh, try and help attract businesses to our our content pages about about the program and making sure that the content is up to date, incentives are up to date, participating distributor lists are easily accessible so they know where to go to get the uh, equipment. I've also found that dur during the pandemic, uh, business owners are you know they've always been cost conscious of course they have they have cash flow issues they need to manage and you know a lot on their plate but nowadays uh, they're even more so than historically uh, before so the midstream program is becoming even more attractive than it had previously to help buy down that incremental cost of the higher efficiency equipment because obviously businesses are familiar with return on investment and they do tend to think more long term about saving energy on their monthly bills in the long term but right now it's you know really day by day and they care about what can I do now to save energy, but also I need to be price sensitive if my water heater goes. So if having that uh, incentive at the point of sale makes it more attractive to them to buy now uh, if, if the incremental cost is uh, very small between high efficiency and less less efficient. Uh, we have run a promotion where we're giving an uh, incentive, higher incentive at the distributor level and a contractor spiff, we call it, to help entice the contractors to purchase high efficiency equipment uh, for their commercial customers. So that's what we're doing right now to help with, with the pandemic. Thank you all for those answers. Um, a question that came through the chat asks about how utility programs influence the products that are stocked in retail outlets. Um, I was curious if any of you could speak to the effect of um, these rebate incentive programs on um, retailer distributor stocking. Yeah, this distributors are looking for demand and uh, a utility program, uh, a midstream program, um, will create demand, especially um, with advertising. So definitely, um, I, I have numerous examples where distributors have absolutely agreed to support a new program um, because they know that um, those programs, those midstream programs work, and uh, they know that, that to take advantage of those programs, they need to stock locally. Um, they, 
um, distributors have become believers. And, um, and I encourage an early conversation before launching the program, reach out. Uh, to the to the trade to the, to the manufacturers the distributors talk about your program and um, and you'll and uh, you you'll see you'll see great support I can I can yeah I, I totally agree with uh, with Francois in regard to that I have participated in few um, uh, distributor uh, contractor trainings and I've seen uh, how distributors encourage or they have uh, you, you know they 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 use com competitive prices to basically to draw attention. Even during those events, they offer you know additional discounts or promotions or anything like that in order to drive you know price down or offer any other type of benefit for uh, for contractors. So I, I actually agree, agree with, with with Francois. Distributors are are really embracing the programs and they know that they they're going to see the value. Same thing on the CNI side. If if there's demand from customers and demand from contractors, the distributors will will stock it and they'll take up that space that they might have otherwise used in their warehouses with with uh, less efficient products. They want you know if it's gonna if it's gonna sell, they'll they'll bring it into stock. Great, thank you all. Um, I think we have time for one more quick question. So. Um, I'll ask you each in one minute if you could summarize um, where you think your program might be going in the next few months or years, if there's um, any major change expected or um, um, what, what you hope to see in the next few years. Um, so I'll give you each about a minute to answer that. I, I can start. Um, very encouraged by the number of uh, programs which have been uh, switching from milling rebates to uh, midstream. Um, I, my wish is um, um, make them available in both in both channels and keep them free, very, 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 very simple. Um, the, the tr you heard it. The trade just cannot deal with complexity. Uh, if you can uh, avoid end user installation data uh, and do um, regional programs uh, like uh, you've seen uh, uh, Jen doing with uh, Massachusetts with coordination between these several utilities, please do it. Um, if you really must have end user data, which is not something that the trade typically collects, uh, please simplify uh, the, the, the data collection and digitize it. Um, that, that's my recommendation. Thank you. Um, I can speak next. Uh, I mean, from my perspective, I'm speaking on uh, uh, behalf of Connecticut and New Hampshire, I mean, basically, we're seeing this program uh, growth, in, uh, in particular for heat and water heaters. I mean, basically, my budget and my goals keep growing year after year. Uh, actually, this year, my goal is, 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 is twice as much as what we had in 2019. It just, it just I mean, heat and water heat, we get really good uh, energy savings and the benefit for, for the customer is, is, is great in this region. But I would like to add that consumer education, contractor education is important, awareness. So uh, we are installing, pro properly installing these, uh, these units and also making sure that the contractors are, are offering multiple options to, to customers so they can take a, uh, they can see the value and, and they can take a, a advantage uh, of, of, of the different rebates that are available. Yeah, and, and quickly from Massachusetts and Rhode Island commercial perspective, we're looking at potentially very early stages at adding electric heat pump water heaters to the CNI portfolio. It, you know, it's a whole process that we have to go through to, to get it approved. But you know, looking at hopefully adding some more products to the midstream program offering and also doing a better job at engaging with our contractor base. We, we've done pretty well on the residential side, engaging with them, but now it's uh, on the commercial side, we need to take more time to engage with, with the contractors. Uh, it's a little bit harder now that we're in a, a virtual type setting, but we're looking at having virtual type uh, offerings you know like this like a conference but for for contractors to come and listen and hear about our programs so that's that's what we're looking forward to in the future 
Excellent. Thank you all so much for your presentations and to the attendees for joining us today. Um, again, if you'd like to continue exploring these topics with our presenters, I encourage you to join us in the Zoom chat room. Um, thanks again for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank thanks, you. everyone.